So the lieutenant governor of North Carolina, Mark Robinson, is now the Republican nominee to be the governor. Governor, And if you just Google Mark Robinson anti-LGBTQ, you will quickly learn that he is one of the most hateful and extreme Republicans in the country. He focuses non-stop on LGBTQ plus people and has said things that would make the Westboro Baptist Church blush. Let's look at some of these examples here. God formed me to fight LGBTQ issues. We're not going to watch any of these. There's so many. I did a video about him if you want to learn some specifics. He thinks that homosexuality is filth. Uh, defends anti-gay comments. Uh, makes more anti-gay comments. Uh, he is campaigning on the trans bathroom issue. This is the guy who literally said that, you know, he doesn't care if trans people don't have bathrooms. They could shit in the streets for all he cares. They shouldn't be using the bathrooms of the gender that they identify with. Um, but he didn't even say that. That's a little bit too charitable. He just said that they should be banned from the bathrooms. Um, there's a lot. There's perhaps hours of anti-LGBTQ plus content. Uh, days of anti-LGBTQ plus sermons. Literally, this man is a hate monger. Um, but remember, he's very anti-gay. And when you're really, really anti-gay, oftentimes you have something um, something that you're hiding from the world and yourself. So pictured here is Mark Robinson and Lewis Money. Now you're probably thinking, uh-oh, Lewis is his gay lover. No, 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 no. He's not gay. <laughs> so let me just let's spoil it right now. Mark Robin Robinson is not gay to my knowledge. But the reason why Lewis is really important here is because he's known Mark Robinson for a real long time, really long time. And he knew him real good. Uh, he, <laughs> he knew a lot about Mark Robinson right? So uh, they've known each other for years, and then they bump into each other a couple of years ago. Um, and then Lewis shares this picture online. So it was cool running into an old friend today. We disagree on politics. However, you have always been cool with me, Mark Robinson. So, you know, Lewis is kind of like a more free spirit, hippie, liberal type of person. And he doesn't like, you know, the divisive rhetoric that Mark Robinson uses. But you know, he's still, he's he's kind of a normie. I get the sense that Lewis is a, a normie, right? But Lewis told us some information about Mark Robinson that's very interesting. So Lewis used to work at a porn shop. And Lewis would even sell bootlegs pornographic videos. And apparently, Mark Robinson, he was a regular at said porn shop. And to say that he was a regular is a little bit of an understatement. Um, he would be there a lot, like every night. Uh, and he bought one bootleg video among many from Lewis here, but he never paid Lewis for it. I think it was like $25 or something. But um, he's in a band and he even made a song about the fact that like the lieutenant governor owes him $25 uh, <laughs> for bootleg porn. So uh, look... It's a story in the assembly. This is a North Carolina outlet. And the title just says it all, right? There's that same picture. Ex-porn shop employees say Mark Robinson was a regular. He denies it. After he embraced Christianity in the late 1980s, the GOP candidate for governor says his behavior did not immediately reform. Six men say Robinson frequented Greensboro video porn shops in the 90s and early 2000s. Now, of course, the question on everybody's mind is... Well, what kind of porn did Robinson uh, like? Well, it turns out he had an affinity for lesbian porn. Now, that's not uncommon for straight men, obviously. But when you have spent so many years, decades, attacking queer people, which, of course, includes lesbians, uh, it's a bit hypocritical. No, it's it's very hypocritical. Now, as we, as we work our way through this article, you're going to see that... It's very clear that Lewis is telling the truth. I mean, we can't say with 100% certainty, but I'd say 95% sure everything he's saying here adds up. Because if he really wanted this to just be like a sensationalist story, there's so much things that he could have said 
that would have been much more of a bombshell, right? So Lewis used to sell weed. Uh, he says, you know, he'd sell it out of the porn shop, I believe. Mark Robinson never bought bought the weed from him. Um, you know, he could have said, hey, you know, this anti-gay politician is looking at gay male porn. He never said that. He said, you know, his, his interests were pretty common for straight male customers. He liked lesbian porn. Still makes him a hypocrite, but nonetheless, you know, it's it's what straight guys are into. So there's so much that Lewis could have said that would have been much more uh, devastating um, that lead me to believe that he's telling the truth because he's not trying to use hyperbole. He, he's saying something that's that's very um, easy to believe, and also it's corroborated by Robinson and other employees. So I, I actually believe that what we're reading is true. But let's go through a couple of paragraphs. So in his 2022 memoir, We Are the Majority, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson wrote that he committed his life to Jesus in the late 1980s. Quote, I did not, however, experience a drastic conversion like some do, wrote Robinson, now the Republican nominee for governor. My behavior did not immediately reform. They say sin is fun for a season, and I was in that season. Okay, so this is not really surprising. You know, he, he became a Christian, and, you know, Christians, you know, they're imperfect, even though they expect all of us to be perfect, and will judge us if we're not perfect. But, you know, he wasn't perfect. So that's part of his memoir, you know. So anyways, Robinson didn't specify how long that season lasted or what sins it entailed. But according to Lewis Money, who worked in several of Greensboro's windowless 24-hour video pornography stores, Robinson was a frequent customer in the 1990s and early 2000s. Money, 52, told the assembly that Robinson came in as often as five nights a week to watch porn videos in a private booth. If you are that much of a regular where you're going in five nights per week, holy shit. Listen, I used to work at Blockbuster. You all know this by now. There were very few customers that would come in five days per week. We had them, but very few of them would come in five days per week because that's a little, you know, obsessive, obviously. We've got lives. We've got, we've got shit to do. Not Mark Robinson. He had time. He made time to not just go in, but go in the booth. Now, I'm not going to tell you what happens in that booth, but uh, I'm assuming, you know, it's inappropriate. We'll put, <laughs> we'll put it that way. And like, as I'm reading the story, I'm getting triggered because I, I have obsessive compulsive disorder and I'm a germaphobe. So the, the idea of going into that booth is repulsive to me. But the fact that he went in five nights a week makes me just view Robinson in a very different light. Like I think of him as like, damn, man, like. Did you wash your hands before and after? Did you use sanitary wipes? Like, are you are you a gross? Are you like Pete Hegseth of uh, Fox News? Do you wash your hands? So five other men who said they were former employees or customers. And let me just reverse a little bit. Five other men, five people. OK, so he's denying it. But five people who said they were former uh, employees or customers during this period also told the assembly that Robinson visited two of these stores, Gents Videos and News and I-40 Video and News. In addition, Money said Robinson purchased hundreds of bootleg porn videos that Money sold on the side. He was uh, good for at least one uh, one a week. That's that's This man had a porn addiction. So you'd go in five nights a week to jerk off, and then you, on top of that, bought bootleg porn bought hundreds of them. Jesus Christ, my guy. Holy shit. Money said Robinson didn't pay for the last one. What a scumbag, which he described as a compilation of <laughs> of super hardcore films he acquired in New York City that were too risque to be sold in North Carolina. Mm. Uh, he said he doesn't really care about the $25 Robinson owes him. Mm, that I doubt. That's the one element of the story that I doubt. Uh, because, again, Lewis Money made an entire music video about it. So I feel like you are kind of butthurt and you want that $25. And it's okay. You don't have to lie. You can ask him for the 25 bucks back. But, you know, you're, it, it, it's the way that you're talking about the $25 and obsessing about the $25, even jokingly, it's giving me that uh, Wojak meme that has like the smiley face mask that's crying behind it. But anyways, nor is he trying to derail the Republicans campaign for governor an unaffiliated voter. He said he likes Robinson as a person, if not necessarily his politics. But what he described as a funny story 
offered an opportunity for self-promotion. In mid-August, Money is Banned, Trailer Park Orchestra released a YouTube video for their song, The Lieutenant Governor Owes Me Money. In the video, an actor in a dark suit said so and, and something approximating a Robinson mask walks into an adult video store to buy porn while Money sings, I made you a bootleg, I did it all the time, most of the time you paid me, I guess it uh, slipped your mind. We're not going to watch the uh, video. I checked it out beforehand. Here's a screenshot. Um, but if you want to watch that, it's in this article. I'll link to it down below. Um, responding to a detailed list of questions, Robinson's campaign spokesperson, Mike Longergan, uh, Lonergan, uh, more like Bonergan, <laughs> Uh, told the assembly in an email that money's claims were bullshit. Hey, watch your language. Okay, you're no longer in center season. And a complete and total fiction. He called money the assembly's reporters. Uh, he called money and the assembly's reporters degenerates. Oh, that's that's rich coming from somebody who works for a porn addict. Lesbian porn, no less. Mike. Uh, this false and personal attack on my boss is complete fiction. Robinson uh, was elected North Carolina's first black lieutenant governor in 2020, two years after a fiery gun rights speech. Um, okay, so they're going to get into that paragraph. Don't need to read that. Um, let's see. Robinson is said to have frequented Greensboro's adult uh, video stores during a formative period of his life. He was in his 20s and early 30s, a married father of two, bouncing around and uh, around restaurant and manufacturing jobs, often struggling to pay the bills. He was also, by his own account, not yet fully grounded in the Christian faith that would define his later political career. When I got saved, the devil doubled down in my life, he told the Bethel Free Will Baptist Church in Kingston in 2021. God told me what I was supposed to do, and I was doing wrong. That voice was in the back of my head saying, stop it, stop it, stop it, and I still continued in disobedience after being saved, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Well, it seems like you are because, like, you're denying what is obviously true. You're saying that you didn't go to the uh, adult private booth in the uh, adult porn store or in the porn store. That's kind of redundant, but in the porn store. And, and you know, jerk that dick five days a week. <laughs> like, so it seems like you are ashamed to say it. Now, that's basically the story. There's, um, you know, he denies it lots of employees are saying no he was he was here and he was a regular there's another element of the story that adds to it that makes it more gross and funny in my opinion so we are going to get to that uh gents didn't rent porn videos money said customers could only buy them for about 50 dollars or a preview uh in private booths for eight dollars a pop that's really expensive jesus christ can you imagine that in this economy uh, Robinson typically watched two or more previews in a visit. Money said, holy shit. So that's 16 bucks a night, five days a week. Yeah, no wonder why you were struggling. That's a lot. And I thought my video game addiction was, uh, you know, an issue. Buying one game like a month. <laughs> I feel guilty doing that. And Mark Robinson is like, let me get like two porn tapes per night. $8 a piece. It's <laughs> uh, every night that I worked, which would have been five nights a week, I saw Mark. Jesus Christ. A money recalled. He was spending a good amount of money. This went on for several years. That is so much money. I'm genuinely curious, like, how much money he spent overall, because that's a lot of money on porn. Like, nobody benefited more from free porn on the internet than Mark Robinson. Like, he's got to be so thankful for that. Robinson came in after his shifts at pizza restaurants. Okay, I think this is where it's going to get into the funnier part. It's not that funny. Like, I'm hyping, I'm hyping it up, so I don't want to oversell it. But, um, oh, there's a spider on the wall behind me. I don't want to oversell it, but to me, like, it just stood out. Um, he said Robinson's tastes were fairly standard for, for a straight man. Though he added, I know he might have problems with gay people, but I don't think he has problems with lesbians. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, categorical no to all the ridiculous allegations. Lonergan, the Robinson spokesperson, wrote to the assembly. He said Robinson knew money because... Okay, so, so this is really important here. The spokesperson for Robinson is confirming that he knew money. Robinson knew money. So this is why I say I absolutely believe the story. He knew money because money used to hang out at the Papa John's where Mark Robinson worked in the 90s and asked for free pizza, but that's the extent of the relationship. Okay, you can tell that 
they're lying because this doesn't make any sense. Um, why would he just hang out at the the Papa John's? I thought he worked at Domino's, by the way, but it's, it's Papa John's. But, like, why would you just hang out there? Hey, do you have any free pizza? Like, you wouldn't show up to hang out there unless you had some rapport with the people, unless you're kind of a weirdo. But, you know, I we had folks, like, when I, I worked in this complex where there was, you know, uh, where I worked, there was a Blockbuster, and then we had Taco Bell, and we had, you know, a McDonald's, uh, and we had other restaurants. And so, you know, we'd all know each other because of that. You know, Taco Bell folks would give us free food and whatnot. We'd hang out. They'd come into Blockbuster and chill. You know, we'd we'd maybe give them our free rental sometimes. So, like, that makes sense. But they're not just going to come and hang out for no reason. That, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, of course, Loner, Lonergan here is trying to, like, leave out some details that don't make sense. And it kind of confirms... That money is telling the truth. Anyways, Lonergan also called money a freak show grifter and said he had a long history of criminal charges. Okay, but who cares, though? He's not running for governor. Who cares? Uh, court records show them. Okay, I don't care about that. Uh, for somebody who doesn't know who I am, they looked me up really quick, money said of Robinson campaign. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. So, like, Robinson, by just, like, denying this and attacking money, could turn him into an enemy. And he could try to, like, make more of this. Like, it, it doesn't seem like he wants to lie and exaggerate. But, like, you could tell he's like, oh, okay, I see. This is how it's going to be, right? He's trying, like, he's doing this for self-promotion. He wants to promote his band, the Trailer Park Orchestra. But at the same time, you know, now they're getting pissed off because uh, he's hitting a nerve. And for good reason. This is very believable. Uh, Money admitted that he sold marijuana for two decades, though, never to Robinson. This is what I mean. Like, if you were trying to, like make the story more sensational, you would you would lie. But this tells me right here that he's not lying. He also admitted that he asked Robinson for a free pizza here and there, which makes sense. If you have rapport, you know each other, and he works at Papa John's, yeah, you're going to get free shit. But the rest of Robinson's version is not true at all, he said. Uh, I think I went in that Papa John's one time the whole time that I knew him, Money said. And this is because I think that, you know, Robinson is probably saying, oh, well, you know, I don't know him. I like... He, he would come in and bug me at Papa John's when I worked there and try to get free shit. But, like, nobody would, would just do that. Like, there'd be a reason. Like, if, if you have a friend that's showing up, you'd, you'd have to know them, right? Um, he pointed out that the Papa John's only had takeout and delivery. This is how you know that's bullshit because Papa John's aren't sit-down restaurants. There's no place to hang out in there. Oh, wow. Money has them dead to rights. Like, he's got them cornered. Again, okay, I said I was 95% confident, but as I read this again, I'm like 98% confident now that money is telling the truth. Uh, asked about Robinson's spokesperson calling him a degenerate and a grifter, money laughed. I think I'm going to write a song called Freak Show Grifter, he said. So, okay, we still haven't gotten to the part that really stood out to me as funny and bizarre. Lo uh, Loner again criticized uh, the assembly for rely... For, re yeah, for relying on money's account. Uh, but five other men... <laughs> he's, he's so fucked. Five other men backed up his story. They are all money's longtime acquaintances and none is inclined to vote for Robinson. But they don't appear to have political agendas. A review of state and federal databases didn't show any significant political contributions in the last decade. Yeah, because they're just telling the truth. They probably are not even paying attention to politics, but they're like, hey, I know that guy. He used to jerk off in our store. Uh, Dan Livingston, who said he was uh, a Gents customer in the mid to late 1990s, told the Assembly that he saw Robinson from time to time. I love how they've got customers that are also regulars. Like, yeah, I'm a regular. I saw, we all know Robinson. <laughs> this is so funny. Livingston said Robinson usually came in with P. Okay, this is, this is the Senate. Livingston said Robinson usually came in with pizza, purchased a preview. Now, just stop right there. Okay, let's not read further. Okay. If you're just coming in with the pizza, fine. That's normal. You know these employees, you're there five days a week, you're bringing them pizza, awesome. But this last part is where things take a turn. He'd come in with pizza, purchased a preview, and went into a private booth to watch it and eat. What? You took the pizza into the private booth? Am I reading too much into this? But I feel like it's weird to like eat all you're jerking off um why would you bring food <laughs> into that filthy booth um like i just like you're it's already like okay 
I'm just imagining him like trying to put the VHS tape in with greasy pizza hands and then just, mm, no, leaving a bigger mess in that booth than he already is. Leo Mitchell, who said he and Robinson shared mutual acquaintance, used to stop by gents after work. So his his acquaintance is even corroborating the story. He's he's so cooked. This is so true. He said uh, he said he saw Robinson every now and then. Mitchell thought he was a regular dude. He didn't really seem hyper political. Money had more vivid rec recollections. Um, he described the future lieutenant governor as funny. I mean, like hilarious. He said he would have like five or six of us up front dying laughing at four in the morning almost like a stand-up routine not copying andrew dice clay but almost like doing an andrew dice clay comedy bit and again this checks out too because if you listen to his sermons which unfortunately i have even though he's saying terrible things like he says it in a joking way and he has the congregation laughing so uh, mark would come in he said he'd bring pizza every once in a while and he'd tell jokes and what have you and then go look at the videos yeah so they seem to not really dislike him you know um he he was he was a nice person and you know they just they realize oh okay so he's uh he's changed a bit now he's very uh extreme and whatnot so yeah there's not much left in the story uh i apologize for grossing you out but um yeah so uh i will never miss an opportunity to hypocrisy burn one of these extreme maga dipshits so uh listen mark robinson vehemently anti-gay Republican and pastor jerks off to lesbian porn. Still gay, baby. Still gay. You're still a hypocrite. Penis and balls. Vagina. Penis and balls. Vagina. P-P-P-Word and balls. Vagina. P-P-P-Word and balls. Vagina. Ass. Gum. Ass. Gum. Ass. Gum. Vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.